Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about digital dentistry. We'll be talking today about the digital impression and also the crown insertion. Our goal today is to make a full contour zirconia crown using a digital workflow. So we'll be making an ASC or an angulated screw channel crown which has a very high tensile strength. So uh, up to 1400 megapascals. So low chipping, great long term solution for a patient in the molar region. You can see here what we're going to use is a special scan flag. And these scan flags are called ELO scan bodies. And this will be screwed on the implant and used to pick up a digital impression. So the patient's returning three months after surgery. They have a 5x5 five five healing abutment on. It's flared. We want to do the flaring. And we're going to start our first scan. So we'll be doing a series of at least four scans here. The first scan is to kind of pick up the emergence profile of the area. So you can leave the healing abutment on and do a complete scan and then come back and erase the healing abutment. Or here we just took the healing abutment off and did a scan. So it's very simple, very easy, very quick. You can see how fast we're going around the arch to actually pick up the adjacent teeth and to get the soft tissues. And so we can see what's going to fit in. So as we go around this gentleman's mouth, we can see that um, it's very easy. We're using a wireless type of scanner system here. This is the three shape and so we have a battery operated handpiece. So there's many scanners on the market that you can use and uh, in my courses I talk about all the different scanners. This is just happens to be the one we're using today. And what you'll notice is that it picks the tissues up very quickly and we can see both hard and soft tissues extremely well. What you'll notice is that the uh, overhead light is actually on the patient's chest here. We could have it turned completely off but you don't want to have the overhead light uh, piercing into the patient's mouth at this time because the scanner itself has a light and that will kind of change the way that the scan is happening on the teeth so you can see that we do not want to have all kinds of light in the oral cavity at the time of the scan so the beauty of a wireless scan is you can rotate your, your arm around and the other ones are just as effective there are very many different types there's USB types but you see this took me one minute and 40 seconds to scan the lower arch and we can see the soft tissues. So as I was saying, you could have left the uh, healing abutment on and then came back and done the scan after you take it off just in that particular area and erase the area. So many doctors will do that if you have tissue that's kind of slumping. This, this patient had very good tissue. I purchased this uh, scan flag actually from Nobel BioCare who is my implant provider. But you can purchase them in many different spots for all the different implants. They come in an assortment of different ones. And so this will be my second scan, which is going to be that scan flag or scan body. So we'll screw this down into the implant, making sure that it's seated. Pretty hard not to seat these. There's a special screwdriver you do have to purchase that goes with the ELO scan body. But you see, once this is in position, it can cause their occlusion to be high. And that's not really what this is for. This is actually just to pick up the position of the implant so that we can digitally start to manufacture a model. And uh, this whole process is going to be a digital process uh, in this uh, three-shape type of solution. So as you'll see that when we're scanning, we're picking up soft tissue scan flag. And we just have to do that particular area now. We don't have to do the whole arch again. So now that we have that second scan merged, we can see the emergence profile, the position of the implant, it's all captured together. And uh, we can actually see how we've modified the two adjacent contacts on the teeth a little bit to make them so that they're actually going to have a better contact once we make the final uh, crown. So we're going to remove the scan flag and put this away. We don't need it anymore. It goes back and can be sterilized and used a number of times after so you know after quite a few scans you're gonna have to replace it so the 5x5 five five healing abutment goes back in we've had it in chlorhexidine so that we uh, want to make sure that this is a very clean environment so the third scan which is going to be the upper arch it's like taking an, uh, an impression so that you have the antagonist so you know how tall the crown's going to be and we'll relate this to the lower arch 
by doing some further scans of the occlusal records. So by doing so, we can go around and scan. Actually, the upper arch usually scans easier because the tongue is not in the way. And so there's a pattern and, and uh, kind of a path that you would follow. And your, each of your scanners will tell you about these paths. But the paths make it so that it's going to be easier because you're capturing a whole bunch of different images that come together. So we captured the palette here. You really don't have to do that but uh, you can. You want to make sure that you're stitching these together so you don't have a lot of changes that are happening the, you know the way the photos are kind of blending together. So here we're going to do an occlusal record with the patient biting in centric occlusion and we can see that as we do this we're capturing the upper arch to lower arch and the computer will start to position these two scans together which is important for the lab so that they can relate the, the two models and you can see here it happens quite quickly there's a little noise so this alignment we do it on actually both sides just to make sure the alignment is good and that the lab has what they need to make the final crown so we'll do the opposite side so we can relate them in reality that first scan is usually enough to do that the relationship of the two models usually goes quite quick and uh, Sometimes if it's a deep bite, you have to be kind of uh, moving the camera a little bit to make sure you can capture the two images together. But it relates them, and so that's your kind of third scan. So the control button can be held on the wand or the scanning uh, device, and you can actually move it around and check things. Or you can touch the screen, meaning that the screen has to be disinfected. Here we're in Canada, you can see the 4, 6, or I think that, I can't remember the American system for this, but lower first molar. And what you'll see is that the digital shade can be taken at this time. So we'll see that the crowns next to it are, are actually a D2 or a 4M1. We can see up, up, we can see C4 and 4R1.5. So it gives us an ability to kind of start to find the shade. It's usually a good reference point to to bring you in and I'll use the Vita usually and start to to it, they're generally I'm picking what the computer is picking so I'll send this to the lab and it will be kind of what they'll use to pick the base color of the full contour zirconia crown so you'll notice that the occlusion is all picked up on the opposing arch we can see where everything is we can also pick up the soft tissues now you can take it and cut some of the kind of uh, extraneous type of uh, soft tissues that are coming on the top on the side if you want to make it look nice but the relationship of the upper and lower model this is like mounting your models on an articulator we don't have a face bow here but we can mount that in face bows if we're bringing in into other softwares like uh, DTX studio we can start to bring this in and mount it to the occlusal plane the digital impressions get sent to a lab and they're going to start to fabricate and design this in a digital format. So you can see here Hallmark Dental Lab then was able to start to design the full contour zirconia crown. And here we can see the contour, the shade is not really represented by what's going on here, but what you'll notice is that they're able to tip the channel and tweak it. So it's slightly to the distal here. So we're going to tweak that and move it forward. So the dental technician will grab the handle and then move the channel to idealize it. And so we can put it wherever we want. And this is kind of nice to have a choice where that channel is going to be. So we're going to try to minimize food impaction by having the implant deep enough. And we did the placement of this implant digitally. And we can also have the screw channel tweaked to be perfect. So when this is uh, screwed together that the, the patient will have a very excellent solution. So then the dental technician will send it to centralized milling and manufacturing because this... Uh, screw channel is going to be kind of milled on an angle so and the solution for an angulated screw channel that I'm using is sent off to the centralized mill so once we get it back we get this beautiful crown that has a titanium interface into the implant and zirconia and the body loves those two materials so they're both biocompatible which means less inflammation in my mind so the lab will tweak this. Uh, they may put a little bit of stain. They can actually add porcelain if they had to close contacts, but usually they come back perfect. We want to disinfect this crown. They're coming from a, a lab, so labs do not typically 
uh, sterilize a crown before it comes back. We're also going to use sterile Teflon and we need to have an OmniGrip driver with the OmniGrip screw which is a special screw for this system. So you can see here I'm kind of pushing in on the screw and you can pull that out and it'll pick up the screw which is part of that particular system. So it's a nice uh, system for knowing where the screw is at all times. So the crown itself is full contour zirconia but the base can be snapped in place. There's no cement on this so it's actually just snapped in so you do not want to cement this in. The screw is going to be stretched that will hold this whole system together and I've had excellent success with this. I don't see any problem with it coming off or breaking. I've had I've done more than a thousand now and maybe one broke and it was on a real heavy occlusion so it's a very good result uh, it also tends to not really come loose because it's a milled structure that's going into a milled implant so the base being titanium that's milled when it fits down inside will actually be um, you know kind of very precisely fitting because they're both milled on those centralized milling machines so we're using the OmniGrip drivers to place this blue OmniGrip screw. What you'll notice is when I put this in, I want to hold the back of the torque driver. You can see it actually in the screw and can be held by itself. So this is a very good system for someone who's just new at putting implant crowns in. So I'm going to hold my thumb on the back of the driver and then on the teardrop of the torque wrench. And when I do this, I'm going to torque this down to 35 newtons. And 35 newtons will stretch the screw, hold the zirconia down on top of the uh, titanium interface, the titanium connector it's called. And when this is seated into the implant, it locks into the conical connection. And so you get this kind of great kind of ability to seal that area. And so you can see I'll tighten it a couple times to make sure that that screw is stretched. We don't want to over tighten it because the, the screw would fracture. So we have sterile Teflon here so we put it through the sterilization process and we're going to take this keeping it dry we want to put this into the uh, implant channel that's now in the center of the fossa because of the angulated screw channel. You'll see that I'll put a little bit of resin. Some people will enhance this by putting MDP or some other type of solution inside to cause the zirconia to etch or to bond better. Actually, more of it's a, more of a bond, but um, I typically just would put in the resin and seal it off and light cure. Check the occlusion, of course, but uh, these are typically a really great solution because the the material itself is, is not going to be an issue but when we're putting the final crown in it's been kind of digitally created and it's getting really super accurate. I, I very rarely have to touch these when I put them in. Contacts are good so you can see this is a modelless solution and uh, looks quite nice you know they had to put a little bit of stain on the zirconia you can see how the resin has to be polished back a little tiny bit there but in all a very good solution so this has been dr scott mclean and this has been a digital solution digital workflow type of crown hope you'll find this helpful and uh, stay tuned we'll be making some new videos very soon